This is breaking news. Great to be here in East Harlem for a great day. This is one great day for this community, something we've waited for a very long time. And I want to say, I first want to thank my good friend, Congressman Espiat, who has worked so hard on this and made it his baby. And before him was his predecessor, the great Charles Rangel. And I tell you, these, they were a great one-two punch along with me in the Senate, making sure we got this money and all these things done. It's been fabulous. I want to thank our governor, Kathy Hochul. She has understood how important it is to have good mass transit from one end of this great metropolitan area to the other. I want to thank Jenna Lieber, a great partner in doing all of this work. Fabulous. I want to thank my colleague and friend from Days in the Assembly, who's always been one of the great mass transit advocates, not just in New York, but in America, Jerry Nadler. And of course, a transportation secretary who was just one of the one of the great transportation secretaries we've ever had. He is responsive, he is smart, he knows his stuff, and he gets the when we ask him, he gets the job done for us. And last, but Pete Buttigieg, oh I didn't say his name. <laughs> Mayor Pete. And not last but least are two groups. First, community leaders in East Harlem who have fought for this subway for a long time. Raise your hands so we can applaud you. And then the people who will make this happen, the great men and women of the New York City building trades, there are going to be thousands and thousands of good paying union jobs when this is built. I see 731 over there. Hi, guys. We love 731 and all the rest of the unions. Okay, so folks, let me just say that this, all, after all the labor, all the hard work from everyone standing here, the advocates to the riders, today we make it official. A first place win for the Second Avenue subway Every dollar we need to build this is now here. <clears throat> if you build it, they will ride, and that's what's happening. I present right now the largest capital investment grant in the history of the program, $3.4 billion in federal funding to advance this subway. We are the number one winner with $3.4 billion. The Second Avenue subway is first. And look at this. We have a new logo for the Second Avenue subway from the MTA letters. Now, so, this is truly a great, great day. The grant is significant not only in its size, but where it's going. East Harlem has been a transit desert. You have 300,000 people living here, larger than many cities. But as, because it was a transportation desert, it was so hard for people to, uh, to use the greatness of New York City. Lots of the jobs, the good paying jobs are downtown. But when you don't have transportation access, or it takes hours to commute and you have to raise a family, you're not gonna be able to do it. Now, with this Second Avenue subway, Boom, people will go right to where the jobs are, and it's not only going to make access easier for people who already use the subway, it's going to allow many more people to use the subway and get the kind of good paying jobs that this area has been deprived of for so, so, so long. This has been a long time coming. You know who first thought this thing up? Fiorello LaGuardia. He lived in East Harlem, and he wanted to get it done. That was in the 1930s, and it took a while. But what you needed was a majority leader from New York 
a great transportation secretary who cared about it, a great president, Joe Biden, who really paid attention to mass transit more than any other president that I have seen, and great congressional leadership that we have represented here in Adriano, Jerry, and so many others. And on top of that, you needed a state that cared about mass transit, and under Governor Hochul's leadership, it happened. So this is phase two. It's going to bring us one step closer to the transportation equity in New York, ensuring that East Harlem has greater access, not only to jobs, which I talked about, but to health care, access to the hospitals that are often not here, but you need to get mass transit to go, access to education, whether it be elementary, secondary, or higher education. 100,000 new riders will benefit from two miles of track, and when the work is done, 300,000 riders will benefit. That's more than in most cities. More than in most cities. We are the mass transit capital of America and the world. When we grow mass transit, we thrive. When we starve mass transit, we starve. The whole city. So we need it. And it's not only going to benefit those who use this Q line, it's going to benefit the, anyone who was on the 4, 5, who waited for the 4, 5, and 6 trains, the Lex line, but the cars were so crowded that they had to let train after train go by, will benefit as well. Because those lines, some of the congestion, those are the most congested lines in the city, they will be there. The Second Avenue subway will have more daily riders than the entire Philadelphia and San Francisco Bay transit systems combined. That's why we should get the most money, Mr. Secretary. And we are. And we are. It's been a labor of love for me. One of the darkest days in New York was under the previous administration, when they, during COVID, when our subway system was basically shut down and they didn't want to give any money. I was then the minority leader, but we had a lot of say in what legislation would pass, and I said, unless we put money into mass transit, New York will die. Because if we laid off all the transit workers and they went their separate ways, the system could never be put back together. But we got $15.9 billion, a record, in the budget. Under President Trump, I forced them to do it so the subway system could keep going and come back. And now we're not just surviving, we're growing again. And when transit grows, New York grows. Transit has been a labor of love for me my entire career. I care about it. I use it. It's part of my family's life. My wife and daughters use it as well to get to work every day. I use Amtrak, you know, to go to Washington and other ways. Um, and. Um, it's just one of the great moments. And this is like infrastructure week in New York. Yesterday, we announced money for Gateway. There's East Side Access, the East River Tuttles, Penn Access, Second Avenue Subway. This is historic. This is Transportation Week. So I want to thank Secretary Buttigieg, Governor Hochul, Congress members, Espiot, uh, Nadler, and Rangel, all the people who work in the MTA, all the great construction workers who will do the job, all the great community leaders. This is an exciting and great day. Let's hear it for the new Second Avenue subway. The money's there. We will build it. You will ride it. And now, please welcome the 57th governor of New York State, Governor Kathy Hochul. Good morning. Today, we begin to right the wrongs of the past. Because when people talk about transit deserts and also transportation equity and racial equity, they seem to forget about this area for a long time. But finally, it's a day of reckoning. Finally, people recognize that this is a community that matters, and it matters deeply. So why all the other transfer projects, and they're wonderful projects, but have installed since the 1930s, yes, we had a depression, 
than 50 years ago. They thought it was going to happen under Governor Rockefeller. We went into the tunnel yesterday. We saw where he started the work, but all of a sudden other priorities took precedence. Other areas of the city and the state are considered more important for some reason. And then things have started to change. Leadership matters. It matters, number one, that we have the President of the United States who understands to his core how transportation dollars are not just money, just numbers, how deeply they affect people's lives when they're done right and invested in communities that have been ignored for too long. It also matters when you have leadership in the United States Senate. Now, I'm going to go out here on a limb and say we're doing a lot better with Chuck Schumer as the majority leader for the United States Senate. Now, he did good as minority leader, but we need to keep him as majority leader, right? We're doing, we're doing better. And members of Congress who are so passionate about this project, Charlie Rangel, I wish this had happened under your tenure. It should have happened. But the stars did not align. The money wasn't there. But you were dogging in your determination to keep this alive. Audrey Espoyat, will you stop calling me about the Second Avenue subway once and for all? Hey, we served in Congress to get out from Buffalo. Why are you talking to me about this? I was from Buffalo at the time. But it kept on and on and on, and your persistence has truly paid off. Jerry Nadler, ensuring that we have the resources as well, a great fighter. Our Federal Transportation Administration, all of you from the community who stood up and says, look at us, we matter. We're here. Don't forget about us. We want to get to our jobs easier. We'd like to save 20, 25 minutes. We'd like to see our kids a little more off. We'd like to have access to better paying jobs in other parts of Manhattan and Westchester. Some say Connecticut, but don't go there. Stay in New York. It matters to me. It matters to your elected officials. And that's why we're so committed to this project. Because it defines us as a people, where we put our money, so is where our priorities are. And how all communities need to deserve to know they matter that their communities are important to all of us. And I want to thank Jana Lieber and all the members of the MTA who have pushed so hard for this. And he's got countless projects on the books and on the table. And now the shovels are going in the ground. And this is a great week for our state and for our city. Jana Lieber, let's give him a round of applause as well, and all the men and women of MTA. But when I know there's going to be union workers on a job site, I know this is a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a huge round of applause to the men and women who build our city and build our state every single day. The hardest working people you're ever going to meet. I come from labor construction, steel workers, plumbers, laborers. That's in my blood. So I have an appreciation for what every single one of you do. Secretary Pete, you have listened to us. You've come so often. Mitch Landry's first day on the job, I was walking through the halls, haunting him about this project. You were there as well. You heard us and you listened. And I thank you and the entire administration for all you have done as well. Showing up matters in this business. You have been here for us, and we will not take that for granted. And money's important. Now, thank you for the $3.4 billion. That's almost as high as my $4 billion. But who's keeping track? So if you want to go a little higher, okay, we got a little competition going here. Um, you know, I don't want to leave any money on the table, but New York State's putting a hell of a lot of money in this too, okay? And it's we're doing it because it's important and it's the right thing to do, and that's what today is about, everybody. So let's celebrate. I'm going to take a minute before I have to go to, I'm sorry, another event, but we're going to sign this, okay? We're going to make this official. Let's call up our leaders and sign this document, this agreement, because this is how we're going to make the magic happen. Thank you, everybody. Next stop, 125th. Please stay seated for the signing of the full funding grant agreement.
Please clear the front as the members are signing the agreement. Please clear the front. Thank you, the agreement is signed. Everyone, please return to your seats as we continue the program. And now, please welcome back to the stage, Chair and CEO of the MTA, Jano Lieber. Such a thrilling occasion to be here with all of you in the heart. I was. I, was. I got a little reminder of what I was going to do, which is to say, thrilling to be here with you with all of these great workers and folks who actually make these projects happen. But I got to shout out the folks who run the system every day TWU Local 100, President Richard Davis, Robert Kelly, a great team, and the reason that we have an amazing mass transit system. Listen, the pandemic hit cities hard, as we all know, and it hit the transit system hard. At the height of COVID, MTA was carrying 10% of its previous ridership, and we were losing $200 million a week. But, New York, but COVID also showed how important transit is to New York, how existential transit is to New York. I always say, for New Yorkers, transit is like air and water. We need it to survive. The system made it possible for essential workers to get where they needed to go, to power through the pandemic. And a lot of those workers came from right here in East Harlem and Central Harlem, in neighborhoods like it all around New York. The transit system had to be preserved for them. And you know what? We were looking at existential financial crisis last spring, but we're not, because Governor Hochul, with the support of the state legislature, passed a budget that gives the MTA a balanced budget for five years. We can pay our workers. Hats off to the governor and the folks who supported that. Five years of balanced budgets, five zeros. And thanks to the great leaders in Washington, Secretary Buttigieg, under President Biden, Representative Espayat, and New York's hometown hero, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, will never stop saying thank you. Thank you to our guardian angel in Washington, Chuck Schumer. But we are making good on the debt to essential workers by investing in transit as a strategy to power New York's economic revival. We're in a golden age of transit construction expansion in New York. The majority leader talked about it. The governor talked about it. We're, we're building things faster than ever. And right here, we've got a great construction development team under Jamie Tur Springer. Rich Davies running transit. I see my friend Adonis Rodriguez running New York City DOT. It's a team. But nothing symbolizes the commitment that we've all got to make transit a tool for equity better than this project. Congressman, you have been vocal about that. East Harlem is the most transit dependent neighborhood in New York City. And people have been waiting for this project for 80 years. Fiorella LaGuardia. The first phase of Second Avenue carries more than 
the next largest three subway systems in America. And now it's time for the people who need transit most to access jobs and education to really benefit. It's also a damn good investment on the numbers, and I want to underscore this for the folks in the press. Building in New York ain't cheap. We all know that. But with Second Avenue Subway Phase 2, you get the lowest cost per rider of any major rail project in the United States. So remember, this is a good value for New York, and it's an investment that we all ought to be making. Finally, we're determined to make this a really beneficial project for this community. New, the MTA already spends 37 percent of all its goods and services purchases for minor, to minority and women-owned businesses. But using President Biden's local hiring initiative, we're going to make sure that people in this neighborhood get to sit there with the people in the unionized building trades and get a middle-class life by working in this amazing infrastructure industry that we have a secure route into the middle class. So on behalf of the MTA, our six million daily riders, a huge thanks to Secretary Buttigieg, to Administrator Nuria Fernandez, who couldn't be here, but is represented by the amazing Veronica Ant Vanterpool, um, and to everybody, especially in our congressional de delegation, led by Chuck Schumer, who's worked so hard for this. And finally, thanks to Governor Hochul, who has made rebuilding transit and expanding transit a signature policy for her. Thank you, everybody. Veronica. Hola, buenos dias. Es un placer estar con ustedes hoy. This is a very special moment for me. Uh, I am a native New Yorker, born and raised in the Bronx. Uh, I was a former MTA. That's right, Bronx. I was a former MTA board member and, in fact, was on the board in 2016 when the first phase of the 2nd Avenue subway opened. So it, again, is a pleasure and a delight to be here with all of you today. Uh, it is marathon weekend. The marathon is tomorrow. And this has certainly been a marathon, not a sprint. And we in D.C., our secretary and our administrator, Nuria Fernandez, we expect and hope that MTA will do its personal best in this marathon. So I certainly want to begin by thanking our secretary, Secretary Buttigieg, and all of the champions, local, state, federal, community champions who have been at the forefront of this from the very beginning. I also want to thank our talented and steadfast FTA regional team, uh, led by acting regional administrator Mike Kulata. We cannot get these projects done at the community level without the talent and the support and the energy and dedication of our teams. So we're here to celebrate a tremendous investment from the Biden-Harris administration in this community. As you've heard, this is the largest grants agreement in the history of FTA's capital investment program. The reason that matters is because it's making a huge improvement in the lives of everyday community residents everyday New Yorkers, everyday employees, everyday visitors, particularly here in Harlem. And that's why FTA has been a funding partner for both phases. We are committed to equity. This extension will provide greater accessibility to east side neighborhoods for visitors and workers traveling to and from other parts of New York City, to those traveling to and from Connecticut via the new connection at Metro North at 125th, East Harlem is one of the most densely developed areas in the United States. It is home to about 120,000 residents and 50,000 people work here. 75%, three out of four, East Harlem households do not own a car. 75%. This is the most transit dependent community in the city. 62% of East Harlem residents use transit and 55% of those rely and use the subway. And ST MTA estimates 100,000 people will take this new train every single day. Many of these residents and riders have lower than average household incomes. About 71% of residents living in this corridor live in affordable housing. This is why transit matters. This is why this is a project of equity. Projects like these are important. And we advance them to ensure that we are providing all communities a better shot at opportunity. The Department of Transportation and Federal Transit Administration will continue supporting transit projects around the country and in this region because we know how essential they are to New Yorkers. All of those who live and work along the Northeast Corridor 
and to the entire nation that relies on New York City as an economic driver and a jobs creator. And thank you to the women and the men who helped get these projects done. With that, I would love to turn the mic over to Congressman Ringo. Congressman. Wow, what a crowd. What did the monkey say when his tail got cut off? It won't be long now. <laughs> it was so crushing, Mr. Secretary, when he saw them found out that the Second Avenue subway was going to stop at 96th Street. You didn't want to be around. But fortunately, East Harlem will have an opportunity now to participate in the work and dreams of New Yorkers and all Americans. And Carolyn Maloney, Jerry Nadler, and I, we were there chopping away. But it took my success SBR to be the tugboat to bring this great ship to this great neighborhood that I thank of. We, Congressman Esmond and I, are working with Angelo and CCNY to make certain that the needs of the MTA will be given by an infrastructure program to train our young people to be able to do whatever is necessary to rebuild the Second Avenue subway and so many other things that infrastructure provides jobs for those people that need them. I have to be short, but history is going to record the name of Chuck Schumer. Chuck and I go way back when he was a member of the assembly. We got more jokes, more experience in the house, and also the great work he's doing in the Senate. No matter what they say about the Congress, you are that bright light in having us to believe that we can make it in this country, we will make it in this country, and we have to succeed in this country. So thank all that made this possible. And Mayor Pete, we have been with you for the fine work and the type of standard that you and the President has brought. This is a rough time for the world, a rough time for America, and a terrible time for minorities in this country. But when we have principles that you have illustrated and the Biden-Harris has, it gives us hope that we will be able to participate. So once again, I want to thank my buddy uh, Adriano uh, for understanding that we must continue to provide for all of the people in our district, in our country, and because of what's going on in the entire world. Thank you so much. Now, please welcome to the stage, Congress Member Adriano Espayal. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Rangel and Secretary Buttigieg. Senator, thank you. I know as an appropriator, I know how important this money is, Secretary. And we thank you, Jerry, uh, and the local leadership here. Without the local leadership, the assemblywoman, the councilwoman, the state senator, uh, the activists, the environmental uh, community, WEAC, and of course, the men and women of labor, TWU, and of course, the building trays. 
Uh, this initiative is not just a transportation project. It is surely that, and it's one that's going to bring social equity to this neighborhood, which is a transportation desert, probably one of the worst transportation deserts in the country. But this is also an economic development initiative, right? And so that's why I'm working with Congressman Rangel and City College in training the young people there so they could have access to prevailing wage jobs. That's so important that this project is connected to building jobs. So this is important because this is Uptown Grand Central. This, this baby here will connect you to Metro North and the 12 counties, including in Connecticut, around the city of New York. It will connect you with express bus service to LaGuardia Airport. And in the future, it will connect to water transportation both in the Harlem River and in the Hudson River. This is truly a regional hub, I believe, for transportation in, in a community that most families use public transportation to get to work. And so this is so important to East Harlem. This is going to connect East Harlem to the rest of the world. That's how I see it. It will connect East Harlem to the rest of the world. And we worked very hard. The governor left, but she was extremely helpful. During the pandemic, we felt that the MTA and the state will raid the funding that was set aside for this project. But we worked hard, Jerry and I and others, worked hard to ensure, and the senator, to ensure that we kept the money coming in for the MTA, for the public transportation system in New York City, which is a fuel financially by ridership. And this neighborhood, the ridership has been pretty steady because it's essential workers. These are the, the men and women that went to work right in the middle of the pandemic as we got hammered by the pandemic. So they deserve this project. You know, and I know that the first phase is a great phase, but it went through some of the richest zip codes in the country. So they didn't look at the job situation too much, but I was paying close attention, Congressman, that the jobs get here where they deserve to be. So thank you so much, Secretary, for uh, your hard work. You know, I know that you have been invested, as the President has been invested, in making sure that any time a transportation infrastructure project goes anywhere in, this, in the country that is also a factor of social equity included in it. And I think this is the one that could be highlighted across the planet, really. And, and we know how people had to walk all the way from the Far East Side to the most overcrowded line in the country, the Lexington Avenue line, and I just saw Jano's vision for, for the subway system, and I was happy to see that there is a fifth phase going all the way west to the number one line. So, Secretary, I will be calling you again. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank all of you for being here today uh, to make this a reality for East Harlem and New York City. With that, I want to introduce uh, the person that has been there for us, for East Harlem. Welcome to East Harlem, Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Right. Well, thank you so much, Congressman. What a great day. What a pleasure to be here. This day, I know, is a long, 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 long time coming. But we are here. Congressman, I was thinking uh, I might go ahead and just change your name in my cell phone to Second Avenue Subway. Because when my phone is ringing and it's Adriano, I know the Second Avenue Subway is calling my name. And you have done so much to, to make today possible. Of course, so has Majority Leader Schumer. We would not be here. We literally wouldn't have the funding without his leadership in the United States Senate to help get this done and make the President's vision of a generational infrastructure investment real. Likewise, we, uh, she couldn't be here today, but yesterday we were with Senator Gillibrand being able to count on her support uh, and everybody who voted for that bill. Remember, you know, we're about to celebrate the two-year anniversary of President Biden signing that bill. 
uh, that was far from guaranteed. We talk about it now like we can't imagine it was any other way. They wrote the obituary of this infrastructure bill many, many times that first year. But because of our friends in the Senate, because of our friends in the House, like Congressman Jerry Nadler, who I'm honored to be joining today, and because of the foundational work that was laid by those who came before. I often talk about these as the cathedrals of our infrastructure. I don't just mean how big they are. I mean the fact that as with cathedral, the cathedral, sometimes the hands that lay the cornerstone are not even from the same generation as the hands that get to lay the keystone. And that is one of the reasons why we are so honored and thrilled to be with Congressman Charlie Rangel. You're right, you didn't want to be around on that day. And I'll tell you, I wasn't around on that day when the bad news came. But I am so glad, I gotta tell you, growing up all the way in Indiana, in my house, we knew the name of Charlie Rangel, inseparable from this neighborhood, and it is a great honor to be with you to celebrate that good news coming to this neighborhood on this day. <laughs> Governor Hochul has demonstrated that when a state puts its money where its mouth is, Great things can happen at the federal level, too. We would not be able to do this without that partnership that we have with the state of New York, and she has been relentless in making sure that we can get big things like this done. And to, uh, uh, to MTA Chief John O'Lever and the team that you lead, uh, thank you for your dedication to getting this done. No pressure, uh, but it's going to be so important now, as I know that you and your team will deliver, uh, to, to make sure that this happens on time, on budget, uh, and, and our team, uh, Mike, uh, and our leadership uh, at, uh, uh, at FTA, um, and thank you, Veronica and, and Nuria, who couldn't be here, and everybody in our MTA team. We will be with you every step of the way to get this done. And to the workers who make all of this possible every day, the good paying union jobs, both building and running the systems that make this city work. We are here with you, we are here for you, and we know you are here to get this done. We, we are so proud to be. I was reflecting uh, on the way up here. Every time I'm, I'm looking around at New York, I, I think about the fact that just New York, the fact of New York City, its existence is one of the great marvels of human achievement. And that great marvel rests on a great marvel of engineering and public works that is the subway system and the transit system here a system that runs 24-7 and is the reason why over 8 million people can get to where they need to go. But it has been too hard for too long for residents here in East Harlem. It can take two hours a day round trip even within Manhattan. And because there's not another option, the 456 trains get so crowded. The kind of transportation access you have or don't have can decide the kind of jobs that you will have or not have, the kind of health care that you will have or not have, the kind of time with your family, and at the end of the day, time is all we've got that you will have or you will not have. And it has not been good enough for too long. We're changing that. That's why it has been such a thrill on behalf of President Biden and the entire Biden-Harris administration to sign the final funding agreement for 3.4 billion dollars to build that Second Avenue subway up to 125th Street. And there will be the stops at 106th and 116th, so residents there will have a much shorter walk to the train. It's going to make it more affordable for residents to get to work and to school. And with that direct link to the Metro North, it's going to shorten commutes for a lot of people who live or work north of the city. And again, even if you don't use it, you're better off for the benefits that come to the people who do because it means a less crowded 456 and less congested streets and cleaner air. And I know the environmental community has recognized that one of the most important things we can do for our climate and for our environment is to create more excellent, reliable, affordable public transit options. When we think about the benefits of the projected 36 million rides a year, we see why there has been such passion about this in a community that has been promised a subway line since the old elevated line was pulled down 80 years ago. And now we're getting it done. Talk doesn't build new subway lines. And especially in a place where the density and the geography and the complexity don't make it easy. But this isn't talk anymore. 
This is real funding and real results. Some presidents talk. President Biden delivers. Some elected officials talk. The elected officials who are here have delivered. And that is why we all fought so hard to get this infrastructure plan through in the first place. And this is part of an infrastructure decade unfolding across New York as we celebrated at the Gateway uh, yesterday and across the country where we have 37,000 infrastructure projects and counting underway nationwide. It is po if it is possible to bore a 44-foot wide hole 100 feet under some of the busiest streets in the world, then anything is possible, and it is certainly possible for people to have a fair shot at thriving in this country no matter their zip code. That's what this is about. That's why we're so proud to be here. I know we have a lot of community groups and some media uh, in Spanish, so while I do not have the fluency that uh, my FDA colleagues do, uh, I'll offer just a brief summary in Spanish. Durante 80 años, llegar al trabajo o escuela ha sido demasiado difícil para los residentes del este de Harlem. Pero finalmente vamos a arreglar este problema. De parte del presidente Biden, hoy, hoy tengo el honor de firmar el acuerdo de financiación por 3.4 billones de dólares para ampliar el metro desde la segunda avenida hasta calle 125. La línea Q también tendrá nuevas paradas en las estaciones nuevas del calle 106 y 116. Y quiero agradecer a los funcionarios electos que nos acompañan para unir, unirse al presidente Biden, primero por aprobar la histórica ley de infraestructura que ha proporcionado el financiamiento para este proyecto y también nos ayuda a mantener este proyecto en marcha. Los beneficios no solo son aquí, alrededor del país, estamos avanzando 37 mil proyectos de infraestructura para asegurarnos que nuestro sistema de transporte sea más seguro y eficiente y para garantizar que nuestras cadenas de suministro funcionen de manera confiable, y lo cual nos ayude también a mantener bajo el costo de los bienes para las familias. I hope somewhere my high school Spanish teacher is smiling. We only got to two of the languages spoken in the city of New York today. But part of what makes New York, New York, part of what lies at the core of American greatness is the diversity of this city. And we are in one of the most storied, one of the most important, one of the most famous neighborhoods in the world, which is finally going to get the transit and the opportunity it deserves. This is a great day in New York City, and I'm so thrilled to be with you. Congratulations. Let's get to work. Thank you. This has been breaking news.